Question 26 begins by com considering the advantage of LEDs over uh, filament lamps. So apart from the cost, what's a major advantage to the environment? Well, there are two really. One is that because filament, uh, because LEDs last much longer, uh, they will produce less waste because they will have to be replaced less often. Or also they use less energy. So, so lower CO2 emissions and therefore reduced impact on climate change. Part two, a light emitting diode emits photons with a very specific wavelength. Uh, the intensity of the light emitted from the LED is doubled. What effect will this have on the energy of a photon? We know that the equ Einstein's equation for uh, the energy of a photon is energy E equals the Planck constant H multiplied by the frequency F. Therefore, intensity has no effect on the energy of individual photons because photon energy is related only to the frequency. BI shows us a, an, the apparatus for an experiment where we have electrons now passing through a thin slice of graphite emerging to produce concentric rings on a fluorescent screen. Explain how this experiment demonstrates the wave nature of electrons. So uh, the experiment shows diffraction, which is a wave property. Only waves can be diffracted. The electrons are diffracted by the gaps between the carbon atoms. Because they have a de Broglie wavelength similar to this spacing. So diffraction occurs uh, when waves have a wavelength similar to the space through which the waves are passing. In this case, the spacing between the atoms is similar to the, the wavelength, the de Broglie wavelength of the electrons. In part II, the beam of electrons in the apparatus shown is produced by accelerating electrons through a potential difference of 1200 volts. We need to show that the de Broglie wavelength of the electrons is 3.5 times 10 to the power of minus 11 meters. Well, we know that the equation of the de Broglie wavelength is lambda equals h over p, where h is the Planck constant. And p is momentum. So we can write that as h divided by mv. Now we know the mass of an electron, that's on our formula sheet, but we don't know the velocity of these electrons. To do this, we need to relate the uh, energy of the electrons provided by the potential difference here to their kinetic energy. So to do that, we multiply the charge of an electron, E, by the voltage through which they're being passed. That will give us the energy of the electrons, which will be equal to the kinetic energy, half mv squared. We can rearrange that to get v, little v for velocity, is equal to the square root of 2 times E times big V, the voltage, divided by the mass of an electron. Now, most of these numbers are coming from your formula sheet. So you're going to have the square root of 2 times 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 times 1200 divided by 9.11, the mass of an electron, 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31. And that will give us a velocity of 2.05 times 10 to the power of 7 meters per second. That's about just under 10% of the speed of light. Finally, we can plug this into our wavelength equation, the Planck constant 6.63 times 10 to the power of minus 34 
divided by the mass of an electron again, this time 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31, multiplied by the velocity 2.05 times 10 to the 7, which finally gives us a de Broglie wavelength of 3.5 times 10 to the minus 11 meters. Now this is a show that question, so it's very important that you show all of the stages of your working. There are no marks of the final answer. And the final question here is a sort of a how science works question. When de Broglie first put forward his idea, it was new to the scientific community. Describe one way in which he could validate his idea as well. The answer here is that he could uh, share his ideas via peer review to allow other scientists to replicate his experiments. Thank you for watching this video from Cowan Physics. If you found it useful, please like, subscribe and visit cowanphysics.com.